Welcome to The Wind Show. If, like our team, you're naturally curious, passionate about Worcestershire, take delight in gaining new knowledge, and above all, love to hear about the brilliant businesses and all the innovation strengths that we have in the county, then this show is for you. to get out of bed in the morning? Well, innovators in Worcestershire are truly making a difference and leaping out of bed in the morning and driving the county forward. In this episode, we're focusing on innovators that continue to make a difference to individuals, businesses and others alike, all within our beautiful county. Our values and social impacts are all in our gift. And when our heart and minds connect, be that as an individual or within a group, with a desire of making a difference, magic really can happen and lives, attitudes and futures can positively be changed. Whether you're helping people or the planet, making a difference results in happier and a more fulfilling lives for you and those you impact. So why wouldn't you? So out and about today is Simon to introduce us to people who are making a positive impact. So I'm joined by John Downs from Glassful. Thank you so much for joining us, John. It's great to be here, Simon. So John, can you tell us a little bit about the magic mindset? Yeah, it's a simple psychological tool that helps people help themselves to take a proactive approach to their own mindset and their mental well-being to improve their energy and engagement, uh, both in work and also in life. Fantastic. So what impact would this have on Worcestershire and the staff and colleagues working across the, the county? So there's, um, there's two parts to it really. There's that tool itself and then what we've done is taken that tool and built around it a programme that organisations can use. Um, so something that's really important for me is that people uh, can fulfil their potential and people do that when they've got a good mindset uh, on the opposite side of that, um, when people are not in a great place, they're not able to do that. We've seen a real increase in the occurrence of mental health and, the, and awareness around mental health. Um, so what we're looking to do is take a programme into organisations that can uh, address that, but not only looking at the mental health side of it, but looking at productivity as well. So what are the innovations behind the Magic Mindset? Uh, there's two core innovations behind the magic mindset. Uh, the first is that it is making psychology simple. And the second is it's helping organisations take a proactive and a whole system approach. So I'll just, just talk about those two in, in that order for a minute. Um, so the magic mindset itself is this uh, simple psychological tool that enables people to help themselves um, take a proactive approach to their mindset and their mental well-being to improve their energy, to improve their engagement at work and in life generally. Um, it's based on the simple uh, foundation of freedom, actually. So it's the freedom from our thoughts, the freedom to choose our response in any given situation, and also the freedom to live a life that we've designed and to do what matters most. Uh, it draws on psychology and neuroscience and uh, personal development, and also um, some therapies as well, so things like CBT, DBT and, and ACT. So it sort of brings all of those together, but as I say, it tries to make it really simple, applicable and um, memorable for people to be able to uh, apply practically in their, in their own lives. So what does MAGIC stand for? Uh, so it's an acronym which is part of this sim simple, applicable and memorable approach to psychology, uh, and it addresses um, the way that we um, can see the world in terms of past, present and future and how we respond in terms of positive or negative response. So the five components are the mindful mindset, an accepting mindset, a grateful mindset, an intentional mindset and a courageous mindset. And those five together help us deal with um, taking a more positive approach to life. It's not about ignoring the negative side, that's just part of life, that's part of the colour of life, but it's about maximising the positive and, and moderating the negative. Okay. And so what support is there for businesses in Worcestershire? 
Uh, so in Worcestershire, there has been a program called uh, Worcestershire Works Well, which has been established for many years. Um, it's, a, it's a really good program. It's got three levels of standards in it, and uh, companies can sign up to it. They get support from the team, um, and it, it outlines how they can take um, their company through a journey around their not just their mental health but their overall well-being. So we've uh, we actually worked alongside this program as, ourselves to see how we can support it with the Magic Mindset material, um, so that companies can address the mental well-being side of things um, at, at the same time. Because uh, what's happened since is the government's come out with its own programs, uh, but Worcestershire was first in doing this, um, and is now sort of has continued to align itself with these other programs. Um, but yeah, it's it's really it's a really good program. Some great support available for it. Fantastic. And so, what have you learned, particularly working with people over the last six months? What have what have uh, what learnings have you taken from all of this? So, we've found there's been a great engagement with the uh, the concept. People really like the idea of taking a proactive approach to mental well-being. Um, but many organisations are still in a, ris uh, a responsive or a reactive mode. Um, so, what we've done is we've taken that core psychological tool and turned it into a program which organisations can uh, implement right from the reactive element of education and support all the way through that proactive element of giving people good skills. Um, and, and the key thing is that it's not just about mental ill health, it's about mental well health. So it's not just for people that may be experiencing a problem right now, and there's, there's many of those, but it, it's actually something for everyone because it's about fulfilling potential, it's about productivity. I mean, interestingly, the fact that we're in different situations has meant that uh, for some people that's, uh, you know, the issue around mental health and well-being is, is even more important. But yeah, the programme is designed to be delivered remotely. Um, and, uh, and the way we're doing it as well is doing it in small sections. So the neuroscience research suggests that Although it's, it's quite practical to do day training, um, pr practical for the trainer, practical for the company and for organising your diary, uh, in terms of learning, it's better to do sh um, short chunks and to do them regularly and to review them. And the thing that's happened with the uh, increased level of working from home and people being more comfortable with Zoom and other online tools, it means that we can actually start to do that. So rather than having, you know, one, two or three days training, we can split that over a number of weeks with just um, short uh, one hour segments that do this sort of drip feed of, of information and knowledge and skills and allow people to apply that in between the sessions and then discuss it at, at the following one. So, um, yeah, so it's actually been a real, I think, advantage to um, the mindset around training and training provision. Fantastic. And so if a company or an individual wants to find out more uh, and wants to start their journey in supporting their staff, how can they find out more? Uh, so they can come to my website, which is glassful.org. Um, do connect with me on LinkedIn. So that's my main social platform. And I'm really keen in the conversation. So this is something that's challenging many people, many companies. Um, so yeah, I'm very keen to connect with people. Uh, yeah, so please do get in touch. Oh, fantastic. Well, thank you, John, so much for joining us. And um, yeah, it's been great to chat with you. That's great. Thank you, Simon. I'm joined by William Tooby from The Fold at Bransford. Thank you so much for joining us today. So can you tell us a little bit about how The Fold are making a difference? Well, I think in some ways just joining up the dots would be one way of putting it. So we've got many different things going on here, from food in the cafe, local sustainable food, organically produced and so on, therapy centre where therapists work with individuals to help people take responsibility for their own health. We've got a care farm where we combine care of the land with care of people, working with people who are disadvantaged in one way or another. Um, how do they make a connection again with themselves through connection with nature? We've got a, a fabulous little farm, market garden farm here where we produce vegetables, uh, but just in a small way, very much low till, regenerative agriculture. How do we do this in a sustainable way? There are so many things that we can do. So, here we have a, a small team who are growing vegetables and we supply a box scheme so people can buy a box uh, and have a, have a box every week of fabulous locally grown seasonal vegetables to make you healthy and to live a wonderful life. <laughs> <laughs> and so what can people do to, to make that difference, to get that connection back to Mother Nature, to the earth? What can they do, small changes in their lives to improve that? 
I think the first thing is to stop being busy. We have this thing that I was brought up to be busy is good, but actually we need to learn to stop as well. There's nothing wrong in being busy at times, being active particularly, but actually we need to learn to stop and to be still and to listen inwards and to listen to what we need from our own internal wisdom. Life has incredible wisdom in its own nature. So whether it's through meditation, yoga, different ways of just dropping in and listening to ourselves, this is the fundamental starting point. And so the work that you're doing here, what impact does that have on Worcestershire and the, the local community? I hope it gives it a possible future. <laughs> <laughs> if we carry on as we are, if we don't question, if we don't challenge, if we don't change, dear Gaia, dear life on earth is going to kick us off because we are in conflict with nature. We've been for so many hundreds of years attempting to have dominion over nature. We need to work with nature. How do we work with? How do we be with? How do we you know, be in a dance with each other and, and this beautiful earth that we're on? What's, uh, what's really stood out for you as a, as a learning over, over the last few months? Well, I suppose since I was 16, 17, I've been aching for change. I've seen that business as usual is not an option. And I've been doing all kinds of things to try and provoke change. And then this march, you know, some change happened. Dear nature threw at us a little tiny form of life that has thrown us into a totally different world. You know, we've been trying for years and that COVID has managed. Just, you know, Gaia, life itself has managed to actually help us stop in some way. So there is, whilst COVID has caused umpteen problems, challenges, all kinds of things, it's actually the positive side, it's helped us to stop and pause, you know. And actually, a lot of people have enjoyed being at home with their families, with their animals, you know, their dogs, whatever, being in nature more, more time with themselves. You know, we have this short, precious time on this beautiful planet Earth, this, this precious life. Let's make the most of it. We don't have to spend our lives being busy trying to do the next thing. Let's just do well what we're doing here and now and enjoy that, love that. And so for people who are curious to find out more about what you're doing here, your fantastic veg boxes, everything that goes on at the fold, where can they find out more? Well, we have social media, you know, we're sort of in the 21st century, just about. <laughs> yes, we have a website, uh, thefold.org.uk, and um, we have, you know, a Facebook page and Twitter and so on and so forth. And... Um, the next thing is we're setting up a charity, the Fold Foundation, to, uh, to develop the educational side, to create space where people can really drop in. To, because I don't think we can help other people. We can't waken someone else up, but we can create a space where individuals can waken up for themselves. And I think it's all about how do we become more conscious, conscious of our potential as human beings. We are incredible. We have incredible possibility. How can we waken up to our true, wonderful possibility? Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this morning. Thank you so much for having us here at The Fold. And uh, we can't wait to see what the future will hold. Thank you so much, Simon. Thank you for coming. All the very best to win. Thanks, Simon. That was truly inspirational. There are so many ways you can make a difference, whether you're a storyteller, collaborator or experimenter. You can become a pioneer and a disruptor within your industry. Some of the ways we can impact the environment, the next generation, and the physical and mental well-being of all are happening here in Worcestershire. Amy, tell us more. Did you know? Thanks, Jess. Shining bright today. Did you know? Innovative design, which won the Bentley Be Inspired Infrastructure Best Practices Symposium Award in 2009 and making a difference with its renewable energy, sustainable materials and recycling capabilities is The Hive in Worcester.
with all that talk about the hive, I'm buzzing. Every little thing we can do to protect the planet counts. And the Little Soap Company are all about cruelty-free, vegan, natural soap for you to enjoy and have recently created an Eco Warrior cleansing bar. They'll definitely clean up with that product. Aspire Academy have taken making a difference to the younger generation and developed an environment where pupils can thrive, grow and achieve. Let's find out how they've been innovating. It's amazing what a bit of ingenuity can create. Innovation in your supply chain can make a massive difference to your business, as well as that of your supplier, but possibly more than you realise. When was the last time you looked at your supply chain?
so inspirational and amazing how local supply chains can really make a difference. Worcestershire really cares and makes a difference. Let's add them to our map. People are our biggest innovation asset. Everyone has something awesome to contribute to being more innovative and developing an innovation culture. Go out and discover ways of being innovative and bringing kapow to your business. Not all heroes wear capes. Now someone takes a holistic approach to mental well-being by looking at organisational context, including company and personal values. So I'm Dale Parmenter, CEO of DRPG. People can find out an awful lot more now. In these days, there is so much information out there. Uh, we use the basis of the ISO 14001 and ISO 2012 one as the basis of our systems and processes. When we first started out, this seemed like an enormous task. Uh, it was almost it was safe, trying to save the planet, and the team really couldn't get their head around it at first. So we started to look at what tiny things can we do. Uh, simple things like how can we save print materials, what to, type of materials are we using. A great thing on, on batteries for microphones like these, we only run them down to 50% and then they go in the bin. They don't anymore. We keep them and they go into remote controls, into calculators and other stuff, so then they go down to zero. So we learnt an awful lot of things along the way that helped us progress and we put in measurement systems to, to track that of what is the impact we are we're having on the community uh, environmentally and from a sort of charitable source. So at DRPG, we're fully committed to supporting our community, supporting environmental issues, uh, so things like supporting local charities, using our skills and expertise here in enabling uh, organisations to raise money or to stage events or to just become more effective in what they're trying to achieve as a charity. On the other side of that is how can we more, be more environmentally friendly. Uh, we, we use an awful lot of power, we use an awful lot of waste, so how can we mitigate that? So the building here, our studios here in head office, uh, we've had 750 solar panels fitted, uh, which produces 195 kilowatts. So the whole of this facility is run almost zero carbon. Uh, what waste we send to, um, to landfill? Uh, we've reduced that dramatically to virtually zero. So we do large events, let's say the NEC, where we could have food that goes to landfill. That doesn't happen anymore. We work with organisations like Fairshare, uh, where they come along and they sort the food, and it goes either to food banks or into farms, uh, and nothing goes to landfill. Uh, and that's a, a big cost saving for our client, but also it's fantastic for the environment. So from our point of view, um, we strongly believe that businesses should be part of the community uh, and I think that creates a sustainable growth for the business but also assists in that community support, the way we can look at environmental issues. So in terms of what it means for Worcestershire, uh, it means an awful lot because I think that's where we can encourage the use of sourcing locally. Uh, we've got a fantastic county to source so many different types of food, materials, services, technology, creativity. So where we can keep it within the county, that's what we do. But I, the advice I'd give to any organisation is involve your team. The team are keen to be involved and we've got a sustainability uh, um, committee uh, that come up with some real fantastic initiatives that then get the rest of the team involved in, including our very own charter that we produced earlier this year. And the charter is a, our guide, our working roadmap uh, of the difference we're, we're making to the community. And if you'd like to find out more about what our work here at DRPG around sustainability, go onto our website and download our CSR charter. We believe that great things happen when people get together. 
by developing a community of inspirational individuals and brilliant businesses to help the region grow and become recognised nationally as a hub of innovative ideas and projects. So whether you want to connect, collaborate, coordinate or just be inspired, WIN should be your first point of call. We can't wait to hear your stories about how you are already or are planning to make a difference. And in the next episode, we will continue to share stories from our county. It doesn't matter whether you want to be innovative with your products, services or processes, or if you just want to celebrate diversity and entrepreneurship. We can help you to showcase your ideas, learn from other innovators and be inspired. Remember, great things happen when people get together. Next time, we'll be talking...